welcome back to the start of a new vlog. I am starting the jeans pattern. I picked up the pattern today from my local copy shop and now I'm looking through my denim stash trying to decide which denim to use first. I wish I had asked you guys before I published my last vlog so that I could get your opinions because I can't decide. It's a tough thing, you know, because I have like so many that I really, really love. And I hesitate to use my favorite ones at the beginning of a test pattern because I've not made the pattern before, obviously. So I can't decide if I should use like my favorite one and just go for it. Or if I should use one that's maybe a little less precious because it's a pattern I've not made. But I have made other Anna Allen patterns. I've made uh, three other Anna Allen patterns. So I'm pretty confident in the sizing of Anna Allen patterns. And I'm also confident in the... Um, modifications that I would need to make. Every single like pants pattern I've ever made, I've either needed to make or wish I had made or have done a flat pubis adjustment. I will link the blog post in the description box that kind of goes over all the different fit issues you could encounter with jeans or pants patterns and how you can solve for that. So after I made my first pair of Persephone pants, which is one of my favorite pants patterns. It's such a great intro into uh, pants sewing. So if you've not tried to and you want to try, the Persephone pants I think is a great place to start. Um, but when I was troubleshooting those fit issues, I came across that blog post. I think it was from Closet Core Patterns, I want to say. Um, but they kind of diagnose a ton of fit issues and what you can do to fix them. So the flat pubis adjustment is definitely one that I will make when doing this, but I just can't decide between these three denims right now. If I'm remembering correctly, I think all of these are from Blackbird Fabrics. This is my favorite one. I love the wash. I love the color. This one's a little bit darker. As you can see, it's a little more black. This is very, is it does it have stretch? I don't know. Yes, it is. It does have stretch and it's not designed for stretch. So while I don't love the color of this one as much, so I'd be more drawn to using it as a first testing fabric because the pattern does not uh, call for stretch denim, I think I have to wait to use that. Although I have used stretch denim uh, and the Persephone pants and the Persephone pants do not call for stretch denim. And I think that Anna honestly would probably be okay with me using this just to see how it works to give her more info for testing. But I think I'm going to either use this one or this um, brushed bull denim in a, this white shade. It's really, really pretty. I would love to have a pair of white jeans. I'm wearing cream color jeans right now, the cream Persephone pants in fact. So yeah, I can't decide. Favorite or safe option. I also have a, um, this kind of like forest green color and this olive green color. Like I said, I have been accumulating denims for quite a while now. pieces are all cut out. Now I'm going to lay out my fabric and cut out my fabric. Eww. My sweet little pattern weight. Pattern pieces are all cut out. I just have the interfacing pieces left to cut. I even have enough of my denim left over to make at least a pair of pants, like, or not a pair of pants, I mean a pair of shorts, maybe even a pair of pants. So that's exciting because this was my favorite one. I decided to go for the dark denim over the white 
And yeah, I think it's gonna be a really fun sew. I'm gonna stop here for the night. Like I mentioned in previous videos, I'm trying to like pace myself with each stage of a project. So now that I have it cut out, I'm gonna take a rest and come back at it fresh tomorrow. Good morning, everyone. I wanted to start off this morning by saying we have finally figured out, I say we, Andrew actually, bless him, has figured out an amazing cold brew recipe. I've tried unsuccessfully and the funny thing is I worked in coffee shops for like all through college I don't know like I worked at a Borders bookstore for seven years back in the day or maybe it was just bookstores not Borders in particular because I worked at a used bookstore too but I worked at Borders for a long time <laughs> until they closed and I also worked in their cafe and I know how to make cold brew on a like commercial scale, but I don't know how to make it like on an individual scale. And the method that I was trying to follow with like a cloth bag, it just wasn't working. It didn't taste good. So I stopped trying to make it. Andrew took it upon himself, took up the baton, mostly because he felt like the grocery store Stoke that we buy all the time. It's my favorite. He felt like it's not strong enough. So he really wanted to attempt to learn to make his own and he did, he did some research. He bought like the, I don't know what that is called, like a cold brew maker of some sort. I'll leave it linked in the description box for you. I'll ask him which one he got. And yeah, and it's delicious. So this is amazing news. So like between the two of us, we were going through easily like two to three cartons of Stoke a week. So that's two to three plastic jugs that we can now eliminate weekly from our plastic consumption. And so I'm like really, really, really excited about this and the cold brew that he makes is just delicious. So yeah, I'm really excited about that. If I can find any recipes, um, I'll link that in the description box for you. I'll ask him if he follows like a specific recipe and uh, I'll put the uh, cold brew maker or whatever it's called in the description box also. It's my lunch break. I so rarely do lunch break sewing, honestly, because I enjoy larger chunks of time. But I just really want to get started on this pattern. Really don't like sewing in a messy environment, so I'm cleaning up my workspace from my previous project. I say previous, I'm actually actively still working on that white dress, but I have to wait for the fabric to come in for the lining on the skirt. So I'm cleaning up my workspace, getting it all tidy so that I can stretch out, spread out to my heart's desire with this jeans pattern. My alarm just went off, I have to go back to work. But I did get a few things done. I got um, my waistband interfaced, the button fly interfaced, and I re-threaded my serger with this light blue color and then tested out uh, the tension for this jeans denim, this denim fabric. So after work today, I'm meeting uh, my friend Emily after work today, so I won't have time to sew like right after work. Maybe I could come home and sew once I get home. I'm not sure how late that's gonna go. Uh, hopefully I'll have some time to pick this up later tonight. I'm just so excited to sew on it, which you can tell because I never sew on my lunch break. <laughs> okay, first of all, do you guys remember those pots? I told you about in previous vlogs. They're on an amazing sale right now. $4.98 for a real terracotta pot 15 inches wide. That's such an insane deal. $4.98. Go get it. I don't know how long it's gonna last, but go get it. I'll leave it in the description box for you. Anyway, exciting deliveries today. Okay, so I bought three orders from Fabric.com. They were having a sale. First of all, I just needed this. This is the rayon 
crepe de chine. That's gonna be the lining for my white dress. And the reason I'm using this and not uh, the textured tensile viscose is because the textured tensile viscose is really heavy. It's like, not really heavy, but it's definitely heavier than this. So I'm trying to make the dress as lightweight as possible and considering I'm gonna have to like fully line the whole thing, which I'm still not sure how I'm gonna like that. We'll see. I don't really like lining skirts, especially not flowy ones. I feel like it's gonna disrupt the flow. So I may make like an A-line lining or I don't know. I haven't fully thought that through yet, but I bought that Rayon Crepe de Chine for that purpose. And then the second order, the third one has not arrived yet, which is the way more exciting one. But the second one. So you may recognize this fabric from when I tried and failed to make that top. I bought it again because I love the fabric. It is a, um, oh, what's the name? A twill, what is, what, what is this? Tensile twill, tensile twill. It's a tensile twill in olive green. And I love the fabric and there's another pattern that I want to make with it. So I bought it again. It's nice and lightweight, it's drapey. It's got good fibers in it, so it'll be nice and breathable, like no polyester in it. It's really soft. I just love textured tensile viscose for a lot, uh, or not textured tensile viscose, um, tensile twill for a lot of applications. Tensile is, like gives it, I think that's what's giving it the, uh, the drape. Twill is the weave. Anyway, I love this color. I think it's a really good color for me, so I'm excited to have this fabric again. I have it in mind for a specific dress that's in my summer collection uh, that I talked about in my last video. I didn't show you guys like every single thing in the summer collection. It's more like I'll show it to you when I get to the project, but this is gonna be something um, in the summer collection. Once the third uh, order comes in, I'll be sure to show you that as well. That one's a really exciting one. It has some very interesting colors for me, not stuff I would normally go for. I think you guys are probably going to think like, what is this that I've ordered, especially if you've been following me for any length of time, because I'm normally into like quite classic um, colors and neutrals, like black, white, cream, olive, navy, blue stripes, you know, like you get the idea. I'm into like a lot of just really classic colors but in this next order there's like pinks and oranges and yeah so I'm really excited about it I think it's gonna be fun getting ready to leave the house to go meet Emily for dinner we're gonna go to a Mexican restaurant called Maria's I'm really excited I've not been but Mexican food sounds like exactly what I want right now I thought I would show you my outfit of the day. I'm wearing a pair of Persephone shorts made in a black bull denim. I'm wearing a striped top. It's, oh, I forget the name of the pattern. I'll put the pattern in the description box, but it's made of a blue and white striped cotton fabric, a cardigan that I got from H&M years ago, shoes from TJ Maxx years ago, and a little tote bag that I got from Amazon. All right, let's go. Working on the Helene jeans, the pattern test that I am sewing. I'm pausing for the night though because I'm about to enter the button fly territory portion of the pattern. So I'm going to come back fresh to that tomorrow just to make sure that I am alert and not going to make any mistakes. Good morning, everyone. I'm up bright and early because I had to check on the garden. There were too many blooms on new roses that were so close to being fully open I had to see. So here's the first one. This one is Crocus Rose. 
I think it's so gorgeous. I love the shape. It reminds me quite a bit of Ambridge, actually. I'm too far away from it. I can't like strain. I'm too far away from it from this position. I can't really like strain to see what it smells like, but eventually I'll get back on the stone steps back here and see, um, but it's speaks for itself, I think. It's amazing. Here's some other blooms that are on the plant. As you can see, there's quite a lot for a first year rose. So you really get a lot, even in your first year. They say first year creep, second year, or what is it? First year sleep, second year creep, third year leap. So by the third year, they're kind of like hitting their prime. So that's the first one. Yeah, Andrew just said, but we also got such good uh, compost. And he's right, roses are very heavy feeders, so they like a lot of nutrients. This is the other one that I couldn't wait to see. This one is Sweet Juliet, and I just, the color is my absolute perfect. This apricot blush color is my absolute favorite color. I love apricot flowers. Like that ranunculus right there. Ugh. Yeah. What a stunner. And while we're here, I guess I should just give you other rose spam. Abraham Darby, not new, but still insanely gorgeous. Eustacea Vi is like the more apricot one, and then the light pink one is Olivia. They are just like going off right now. Tonight we are having some friends over. We're making a pulled pork recipe that is already in the oven so it can have several hours to get nice and tender. I'm about to make a potato salad and I think we're also making like a side, oh the Olive Garden salad. The Olive Garden salad, the one that I've told you guys about, we're making that one too. We love it. Um, yeah, so I'm gonna go ahead and get that potato salad together. It's kind of an involved recipe, I feel, because you have to boil the potatoes and I put eggs in mine and I also put a little bit of bacon in it. So it's kind of got like a bunch of stuff that has to be cooked in separate pots before I can mix it all up. <laughs> sewing room. Our friends are coming over around 7 30 so I have a few hours to work on my pattern test and I've gotten a little bit further. The fly is one of my favorite things to work on in jeans patterns. I just love the top stitching for it and it just like I don't know makes it look like jeans obviously. Um, if I were not pattern testing I would be doing like a full-on exposed button fly uh, because that's just my favorite look. I like the row of buttons to be seen, but since it's a pattern test, I'm going to go ahead and do it the way the instructions tell me to do so. But yeah, I'm really loving it. It's been a fun process so far. Yes, I did. Does it need additional seasoning? I put, I taste it for salt, but maybe you should try it again just in case. Spice King. So you mean perfect? Yep. <laughs> wow, this looks so amazing. Yay. Yeah. interrupt 
this very um, important pattern test for an exciting and surprising fabric haul. <laughs> um, so I told you guys in my last video that I have started designing a summer collection and I have several outfits that I was inspired by and definitely did not have fabrics for. And let's just say there's a lot of creamsicle colors in here. <laughs> All right, let's get into it. First up, this Robert Kaufman linen in this pink color. I know, this is so out of my character. It's so out of my usual, but I saw this outfit I'll insert a picture because I'm obsessed with the entire outfit and I want to dupe it exactly, colors and all, and this is gonna be for the shorts. I mean, it's amazing. 100% linen, uh, Robert Kaufman linen, and I bought one and a half yards of that. And then for the jacket pattern, Hopefully I'll have enough left over to make like some sort of bandeau top to go with it, like my inspo fit. Um, we'll see what happens, but I usually only need like one yard for shorts. But for the jacket, oh my gosh, I'm so excited. This color is even better in person. This one's also 100% linen in this like creamsicle orange color. Like, let me, let me just show you these two together. L look at them together. It's perfection. This is gonna be such a cool outfit. I am like beside myself with excitement. So my order of operations for finishing projects, I'm gonna finish my pattern test first because I've committed to that. I want to make sure I get that done on time and get really good feedback to Anna for this pattern. Then I'm going to finish my white dress because it's so close to being done. I can't wait to have that in my wardrobe. And then this outfit is next up. For sure. I'm so excited to make this. I know it's probably going to be a Marmite thing, you know, like either you love it or you hate it, but I just think that the outfit is so cool. And I also think that the separates will work really well in my wardrobe too. Like the pink shorts with a black tank top or the orange cropped blazer with some Persephone pants. Like it could work with so many other things and I love them together. So I could not be more excited about this project. Oh, and the linen is just so nice. These fabrics are gorgeous. I'll leave all of them linked in the description box as per usual. Okay, next up, there was only one yard of this and I just wasn't sure looking at it if it was the right shade of pink. And since there was only one yard of it, I figured why not? It was on a good sale too. It's a twill a Robert Kaufman twill. And this one is definitely not as on point as the other pink that I got, so I'm glad I got the other one. But since it was on such a good sale, I decided to get it anyway. It's more, much more of like a bright salmon. I don't know what I'm gonna make for this yet, but it could be that I don't have enough left over for the shorts to make the bandeau top, so maybe I can make that with this. I, I don't know, I'll figure out something for it. I'll figure out something for it, but it does have quite a structured drape, so it needs to be something that needs some structure. It can make a cool like bustier or corset type of pattern, which I also bought a bustier pattern recently that I'm really excited about. Next up, more of the olive tinsel twill. I showed this to you already earlier in the video. One of the, uh, back, I think I have the pattern right here. Yes. So the one that I showed you earlier, I mean, it's the same fabric, but that cut that I showed you earlier is earmarked for this dress right here. This is M8030 uh, McCall's pattern. So that's what that's for. But I also got a little bit extra because A, I just love this fabric so much. I loved the olive green color. It's the perfect color. Um, but I think it will make a great pair of shorts also. So I'm thinking about making the same pair of shorts that I'm making for the pink ones. I'll also make a green pair, or maybe I'll just make a different shorts pattern. I don't know, but I really like this green and would love to use it in many applications. And then last, because I think the others are just swatches. No. I also got um, this Bember rayon, which is kind of like 
silk charmeuse, but I use it for uh, linings. It's great for linings. So I got this to be the jacket liner for my jacket or to be like a lining for a skirt. I was just kind of running low on these kinds of fabrics. So I got this. I thought it was a good color, just like a nice like kind of taupe color almost. I don't know what it's called, but I'm sure I'll, I'll put it in the description box for you. But yeah, it's just like a nice taupe color. So I got that. I also got a swatch of this check fabric because I'll put the inspiration on the screen of the outfit that I want to make for it. Uh, I thought this could be a good fabric, but I really wasn't sure. I do like it actually. I think it could, I think it could work. It is quite a like rustic fabric, but uh, the inspiration, Rebecca, it's a Rebecca, one more time. The inspiration is a Rebecca Taylor pattern. And I looked at the uh, specs online and it's a mostly linen um, fabric actually, which was surprising. And this one I think is either cotton or linen. It looks, I don't know, it's got kind of that texture to it. I think it might be a cotton, but it's a good check. I just think it's a really small check. So I hope it's not too small to be noticeable for this pattern. Do you know what I mean? But it's a good color too. It's like tan and navy. So I like that. So I got that swatch to check out this fabric. I think that might work really well actually for that project. And then last but not least, I got this linen color, which is much more brown in person than I was expecting. I was expecting it to be like a little more mauve-ish, like, like a dark rose color, um, but it's definitely much more brown in person. I may end up sending this one back. We'll see. Uh, but I'll put the picture on the screen of my inspiration for this dress. It's a five ounce linen, so it's really lightweight. It's the same linen that I used to make um, another dress that I have in my wardrobe that I really, really liked. So I thought I would get it again to work with it again, but I don't love this color so much. I don't know. It could be good on me. We'll see. I'll think, I'll think about it. But there was another color that I was like on the fence about as well. So I, that one could be the right one. We'll see. But yeah, so I got quite a bit of that actually. I want to say like, oh, three and a half, three and a half yards. So not a ton, but enough to make the inspiration dress that I'm showing you right now. And that's it. That's my mini fabric haul. I truly like to buy fabrics usually when I have like a designated plan for them. And I'm just so excited about this like summer collection project and having my sewing mojo back. I cannot wait to sew the creamsicle outfit. Like I know this is so strange, but yeah, I really cannot wait to um, make this. I wouldn't say strange, but just like very different for me. So yeah, I can't wait. But yeah, that's the fabric haul. And um, oh, and one other thing, I got a pattern in the mail. This is McCall's 7802. I got it for this view specifically right here, view D, because I want to dupe um, this Karen Millen dress that I saw from an influencer that I follow. Uh, I'll put a picture on the screen of the dress. And so I feel like this will be the perfect pattern to dupe that dress. All right, gotta get back to this jeans pattern. Good morning. I am headed to UPS to drop off some return packages. And then after that, I'm meeting Brittany at the Brooklyn Botanic Garden. I'm very excited because it's June right now and it's rose season. So the roses are gonna be amazing right now, hopefully. I mean, mine are, so I feel like the ones at the Botanical Garden are gonna be just as gorgeous. And yeah, so I'm really looking forward to seeing those today. It's probably gonna be very busy over there though, because you know, it's New York City and <laughs> it's a Saturday. So we'll see how it goes, but yeah, I'm looking forward to it. That was funny. So rolled up into UPS and was like, I have five packages I need to return. And he was just like, <sighs> anyway, successful UPS package drop off. I'm now walking over to the Brooklyn Botanic Gardens to meet Brittany and it's, a gorgeous day outside. I also bought some sunscreen while I was in the, uh, it's a UPS inside of like a bodega. So I also got some sunscreen while I was in there, protect myself because it's 
quite warm. It's an absolutely perfect day outside today. It's gonna be a high of 78, nice and sunny, beautiful, gorgeous day. By the way, it is June, so that means it's Pride Month. Happy Pride Month to all of my LGBTQIA plus friends and fam. I love you all so much and celebrate you and your love, not just in June, but every day. Farmer's Market Day here in Brooklyn. Almost everybody has armloads of peonies right now, it seems like. Brittany's here. Yay! <laughs> Yay! And uh, we just walked into the Brooklyn Botanic Garden. Like I mentioned, it's rose season, so it's gonna be so beautiful right now. I cannot wait. Good call on the sunglasses. I should have worn contacts today. <laughs> oh no! finished up at uh, the Brooklyn Botanic Garden. We're back in the farmer's market. Just got ourselves a juice. I, a journey. A I know. Journey. A juice journey. The first truck was out of, right out of gas when we were in line. This one right here. <laughs> so we had to run to the other side of the farmer's market to get our juice from a different cart. They're so good. I got an apple lemonade. Who knew that apple and lemonade would taste so good it's together? Oh, what would you something, get? Something fruity. Tootie fruity. <laughs> yes. Mango, strawberry, banana, banana, something else. Yeah, and it's very refreshing. So now we're just walking alongside the park, headed to maybe the local bar in my neighborhood for some sort of snack to get with um, our juices. I'm back home. Um, Brittany and I had such a great time. We went and got lunch, as you saw, at our local bar and then stopped by to look at my gardens, came back here and 
just kind of hung out for a little bit and then she left and then Andrew got back from the game club and now we're cuddling and watching some chef's table on Netflix. Good morning. Andrew and I just got back from the grocery store, did our meal planning for the week, um, and now I'm in the craft room working on my jeans pattern test. It's going really well so far. Just been making notes about anything I would um, give for suggestions for the pattern test. And yeah, so far so good. It's going smoothly. Hi, kitty. So yeah, it's been really, really fun to work on. I'm so anxious to try it on. I've been like trying to pace myself with it so that I don't make any silly mistakes, um, but I really hope I can try it on today. <laughs> All right, I'm pausing on the jeans because the love of my life is being sensible and saying that we should eat lunch. <laughs> we did go to the grocery into the deli this morning to get some special deli items to do a picnic outside. So we are headed to the park. look in the mirror like in this mirror and in my other mirror I feel like they look really good but then I went outside to take pictures of them and I feel like they look absolutely horrible on me like not flattering at all I don't know maybe it's just a bad body image day I, I don't know but in the mirror I feel like they look fine they look really cute and then when I went outside to take those photos and looked at them in camera I was like oh my gosh this looks horrible these look so bad on me or they're not figure flattering. I don't know. I don't know. Good morning, everyone. So last night I started the very odious task of removing or unpicking, I should say, the inseam, which had the stitching, edge stitching, top stitching, and surging on top of that. Let me tell you how not fun that was, but I am pretty much done. There's a lot of like extra threads in here that I've been trying to like pick out, but really the reason I did this is because I want to take the pattern piece that I cut and cut it out properly as intended. Now the reason that I've unpicked all of this is because when I cut out this pattern, I cut it out with a flat pubis adjustment accounted for into it. And the reason that I've done that without ever having sewn the pattern is because every single pair of pants I've made so far, I've had to make a flat pubis adjustment or I wished that I did. And all of the pants I buy in ready to wear always have like gaping at the crotch level. So I just assumed with this pattern that I would probably need it. So I went ahead and accounted for it didn't need it. Luckily, with a flat pubis adjustment, you're actually adding more fabric to the crotch. You're not taking fabric away, so there's still fabric left. I didn't like overcut is what I'm saying. So basically, all I have to do, all I have to do is unpick all of that stitching, which is a, an annoyance, but at least I can lay the pattern piece over it and recut and retrim the crotch area. Uh, and it's not like lost, like I can still fit it and it will still be better after I fix it. So that's what I'm doing right now before work. It's like, I don't know, seven or 7.30 at the moment. So yeah, I'm hoping to get this recut before work. I'm sure I can get it recut before work, but I probably won't get much sewing done on it until after work. Okay, I sewed them. It's a much better fit, I think. I'm really excited about it. They're way more comfortable now. I still get like a slight wedgie in the back, but I'm hoping the other pattern testers can tell me uh, why that might be, but it's definitely more comfortable in the crotch now, which is good. Yeah, I'm really, really excited about it. I still have to take them off and sew 
the inseam properly with like all the top stitching and stuff, but I couldn't wait to try them on and now I have to go to work. So <laughs> I will hopefully be able to finish these this afternoon and decide on a length. I think I want to do a slightly cropped length on these maybe, but I don't know. They're such a classic dark blue denim. They almost look black on screen, I'm sure, but they're such a classic denim. Maybe I should go for like the longer like boot cut length. I don't know. We'll see.